Earlier you saw me dropping screws all over the place while I was trying to put these screws in here to hold the stepper motors. Uh, and duh, use the uh, hemostats for that, pal. Uh, in a typical Cartesian machine, you've got one motor that controls the x-axis, one motor that controls the y-axis, and another motor, or possibly two motors, that control the z-axis. And the three motors kind of work independently to control the movement of all three axes of the effector. You can see here on a delta machine that all three motors have to work simultaneously to control the x-axis and the y-axis and the z-axis. When I put this machine together, I didn't really pay attention to which axis was which, um, but on this new machine, I'm putting a little more thought into it. So what, what I've done here is I have the motherboard out, and I've laid out the machine the way I think it's going to be. I have decided that this corner with the label on it is going to be the left front of the machine, and I have labeled the motor here X, and I've just used a little Dymo label maker for that. Uh, I've got the motherboard here, and just going uh, clockwise around the machine, this is going to be the Y axis, and this is going to be the Z axis. Now, there may be some convention for Delta printers as to which motor is which. I haven't found one anywhere. Um, if you do research and you find that it ought to be done differently, uh, more power to you, and you know, leave a comment or something if, if you find that out. Um, the reason I laid it out this way is that I think this is going to give me the shortest cable run. So uh, the X motor is going to connect right here, the Y motor is going to connect right here, and the Z motor will connect right here. So that will give me the shortest, cleanest cable runs back to the motherboard and kind of keep all my wiring underneath here a little easier to see it a little more predictable. Okay, so I have all three stepper motors installed on the bottom triangle, and I have all the pulleys in on the top triangle. So for a little while, we're done with those. I'm just going to push those off to the side. The next step in the process is to build the effector, and that's what holds the print head. Okay, looking at the hot end assembly, the uh, first thing they recommend that you do is remove the heating element and also the thermistor, which is a little device that actually measures the temperature of the hot end. So you can see the heating element right here and you can see where the thermistor comes through. There's a little set screw right here and I think that's a 1.5 millimeter, looks like that's the 1.5 millimeter tool here. So use the 1.5 millimeter um, hex driver to just loosen up that set screw and slide the thermistor and the heating element off to the side. These are fragile, and I noticed on Amazon the other day that they sell these in packages of five. Uh, I assume they sell them in such packages because people manage to break them or ruin them. I haven't had a problem with the other machine, but um, I'm just going to take care here to set this aside in a place where it's not going to get damaged. Okay, so this is the this is the hot end assembly, and it, you can see at this end we've got the nozzle, um, this little block right here. Actually, the entire block heats up and uh, the melting of the filament happens right here. Uh, this will actually thread out and you can kind of see the filament path. Um, the, the Bowden tube, or I don't know if it's a Bowden tube or a Bowden tube, but anyway it plugs in right here. So the filament comes through this and these cooling fins here make sure that the filament doesn't really start to melt until it actually gets into this, this heating block right here. So the illustration in the instruction manual kind of leads you to believe that this upper flange right here is actually supposed to end up on the top surface of the effector housing. When I built the last one I spent a lot of time looking around on the internet to see how to do that because there's not really any way to get this apart. This is all one piece from here to here and this is screwed on here really tightly and given that it wasn't just threaded on loosely and I couldn't just take it off I didn't I didn't try uh, I eventually determined that actually the hot end goes into this housing like so, uh, and then it's held in place by this horseshoe clamp. So um, what you do is put this horseshoe clamp on here first, and then slide the whole thing in like so, uh, and then the screws, which are the, the C6 screws, these shorter ones here, 
they go in here and they fit into that horseshoe clamp and what you want to do is put those in and you don't want to tighten them down you just want to get them until they bite um, because this is what allows you to adjust the angle of the hot end later okay so I've got the hot end in the effector housing as you can see that's free to rattle around in here and you may be able to see that horseshoe fitting Lighting's not real great in here, but there's that horseshoe clamp right there. And you can see that that's free to, free to kind of wiggle around. And eventually what we'll do is we'll get this aligned very carefully after we're all ready to go. This is also the hot end. It's free to turn right now. And when we clamp that down, it'll stay still. Okay, the, the kit provides two fans. There's a sort of a traditional looking um, blower fan here. This is, this is typical of what you'd find in a small computer. Um, and then also this sort of squirrel cage fan. This fan is, is directs cooling air over the bed of the printer and its purpose is to cool the actual filament off after it's been extruded. Uh, that's to freeze the filament to the to the layer underneath it or to the to the print bed. This fan actually keeps the hot end itself from overheating. Uh, it blows over these fins right here. So when you put the uh, effector together, be sure that this uh, sort of, well, it's a hexagonal plate I guess, um, is fitted so that this slot for this blower fan is adjacent to the flat side, uh, the closed side of the effector housing, and the open side with this big round hole here, this is where this blower fan is going to go approximately here. Okay, now that I've got this uh, lined up, I went ahead and tightened the base of the effector here onto the hot end housing here. And you can go ahead and snug this up. Note that this is kind of thin gauge metal. You don't want to get carried away and tighten this up too far, too hard. So just, just what you can put on with just a couple of fingers, just your two fingers on the end of the ball driver really seems to be tight enough. I haven't had any problem with the with it coming loose on the other machine. Uh, just just snug those. Just snug. And now once you've got that done, now you can go ahead and tighten down the other end here, uh, this little horseshoe clamp that holds everything in place. This can't move now, and when we tighten this down, it kind of sandwiched the hot end in between the housing and the bottom of this effector plate. So this is now, it's now lined up, and it just has to be straight. It doesn't have a choice. This is sort of forced to be perpendicular. The, the hot end is forced to be perpendicular to this plate. Uh, so at that point, you can just bring these up until they're just snug because you don't want to distort anything. So I'm just going to bring them up until they're all snug, kind of like when you're changing a tire. Um, you kind of bring all of the lug nuts up to snug. And then I'm just going to give them maybe a quarter of a turn each just to get everything tight and maybe just go around and kind of work crosswise in a kind of a X fashion and tighten one and it loosens up the other. So you just want to slowly bring them to snug. Anytime you're making something like this, it doesn't matter whether it's a 3D printer or you're working on a model kit or a model airplane or some piece of high-tech equipment, uh, maybe a piece of uh, you know office equipment or something. Um, whatever you're working on, it's a good idea to bring the nuts up, bring the screws up just till they're all snug, get everything in place, and then after that you can crank down on everything.